Hare Krishna and we are about to conclude the book called The Perfection of Yoga by His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We're on the last chapter called The Perfection of Yoga, page number 54. It is a fact that, therefore, in the process of the living entity toward the perfection of yoga, birth in the family of yogis or devotees is a great boon for such a birth gives one special impetus. Quote, but when the yogi engages himself with sincere endeavor in making further progress, being washed of all contaminations, then ultimately after many births of practice, he attains the supreme goal, unquote. Bhagavad Gita 6.45. When one is finally freed from all contaminations, he attains the supreme perfection of the yoga system, Krishna consciousness. Absorption in Krishna is the perfect stage, as Krishna himself confirms. Bahunam janmanam ante gyanavan mam prapadyante vasudeva sarvam iti samahatma sudurlaba. Quote, after many births and deaths, he who is actually in knowledge surrenders unto me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all that is. Such a great soul is very rare. Unquote. Bhagavad Gita 7.19 Thus, after many lifetimes of executing pious activities, when one becomes freed from all contaminations arising from illusory dualities, he engages in the transcendental service of the Lord. Sri Krishna concludes his discourse on the subject in this way. Yogi nama pisarvesham magate nantaratmana shradhavan bhajate yomam same yukta tamomataha Quote, And of all yogis, he who always abides in me with great faith, worshipping me, in transcendental loving service, is most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all." Unquote. Bhagavad Gita 6.47 It therefore follows that the culmination of all yogas lies in Bhakti Yoga, the rendering of devotional service unto Krishna. Actually, all of the yogas delineated in Bhagavad Gita end on this note. For Krishna is the ultimate destination of all the yoga systems. From the beginning of Karma Yoga to the end of Bhakti Yoga is a long way of self-realization. Karma Yoga without fruitive results is the beginning of this path. When Karma Yoga increases in knowledge and renunciation, the stage is called Jnana Yoga or the Yoga of Knowledge. When Jnana Yoga increases in meditation on the Supersoul by various physical processes and the mind is on Him, it is called Ashtanga Yoga. And when one surpasses Ashtanga Yoga, one comes to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. That is called Bhakti Yoga, the culmination. Jai. So Bhakti Yoga is the culmination. Factually, Bhakti Yoga is the ultimate goal. But to analyze the Bhakti Yoga minutely, one has to understand the other processes. The yogi, who is progressive, is therefore on the true path to eternal good fortune. One who sticks to a particular point and does not make further progress is called by that particular name. Karma Yogi, Jnana Yogi, Dhyana Yogi, Raj Yogi, Hatha Yogi, etc. But if one is fortunate enough to come to the point of Bhakti Yoga, Krishna Consciousness, it is to be understood that he has surpassed all the other yoga systems. Krishna Consciousness is the last link in the yogic chain, the link that binds us to the Supreme Person, Lord Sri Krishna. Without this final link, the chain is practically useless. Those who are truly interested in the perfection of the yoga process should immediately take to Krishna Consciousness by chanting Hare Krishna, understanding Bhagavad Gita, and rendering service to Krishna 
through the Society for Krishna Consciousness and thereby surpass all other systems and attain the ultimate goal of all yoga, love of Krishna. Jai, we have completed the perfection of yoga, the fourth book of many, many books <laughs> that we're going to read that were written by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada, written or based on the teachings that Srila Prabhupada has mercifully showered upon us. Actually, I wanted to have the reflections immediately after reading the book because I think it gives much sense of... because everything is super fresh, we just finished the book and it would be much easier for me. And also because I didn't want to take a day off. All right, so basically, actually the perfection of yoga was one of those books, I say that, maybe I say that about every single book that, oh, I, this is my favorite book, oh, I really, really love this book, oh, this book is amazing. This particular book is really incredible because, first of all, you can actually give it to any yoga practitioner, specifically yoga practitioner, and it would really, really make them understand how yoga is connected to actual devotional service and how yoga is not just I, I actually I keep I forgot where in which book Prabhupada says refers to yoga as mystic gymnastic I was expecting that the topmost yoga system would say that yoga is mystic gymnastic I was expecting that perfection of yoga would say yoga is a mystic gymnastics but uh, I don't remember which one of the small books of Prabhupada had this analogy that yoga is basically just a little kid uh, like doing nonsense so you just make him sit down and do nothing for a while so yoga is like that whatever we do outside of our relationship with the lord so instead of all that we just do yoga you know that's kind of the analogy that but it's it's really incredible like for me you can say that i was practicing bhakti yoga for the past 25 years but technically uh when you're a toddler or you're a baby it doesn't count I wouldn't say it counts too much because I'm not really conscious at that time. <laughs> so, okay, let's say that consciously... Although, okay, you can, you can say that I was practicing because I was doing it maybe unconsciously, but still I was doing it, right? Okay, let, let's count it. So, for 25 years of yoga, 25 years of bhakti yoga, 25 years of uh, Krishna consciousness movement, uh, practicing within Krishna consciousness movement, like, I'm reading this book, and some of the things that I personally read, I knew for a long time, because you keep hearing these things all over again, right? Like, you keep hearing about how, basically, Bhakti Yoga is the highest, that Bhakti Yoga is the culmination, that uh, Hatha Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Karma Yoga are just steps on that ladder. And bhakti yoga is the greatest and how basically hatha yoga in this age is not practical and uh, some people may really say that you know oh but i know such great yogis they levitate they they almost fly they can do this and that that's the thing they can do so much but that's great but uh, is that going going to save you from birth death old age and disease is that going to actually like give some permanent result right take you to the final destination right so doing something awesome for a short period of time but then what's going to happen next birth right again we read in the same chapter wait i don't want i don't want my reflections to turn into some like kind of a preachy content when i kind of attack those yet uninformed about the intricacies of life uh but uh, Hatha Yoga is a part of that ladder to Bhakti Yoga, so yes. Hare Krishna, thank you so much for tuning in today. We're going to start the next book tomorrow, so stay tuned. And the link to this book is in the description. And we will see you next time. Hare Krishna.